What's going on guys, Andrew Pillick Hockey here back again with another video. Thank you guys so much for the support on the most recent video and on just on all the videos. You guys have been awesome showing so much support, watching them, liking and subscribing. And if you are new here, liking and subscribing does help me the most. We're talking about Ilya Samsov, Samsonov today. Jesus, I can't even talk. Uh, and about salary arbitration, talking about where the Leafs came in, where the where Samsonov and his camp have come in, uh, and whether or not the Leafs are going to have to make a move there, uh, what trade implications that this could have, because there's always little things here and there that the Leafs will have to do due to their cap situation uh, going into this season. But like I said, uh, I know there's a ton of you guys that watch these videos, actually 66% of you guys watch these videos that aren't subscribed. I'd really appreciate it if you did that. It helps me a lot. Uh, but yeah, I'm, we're going to be talking about the Leafs starting goaltender today. Like I said, um, Ilya Samsonov, uh, Ellie Freeman sparked some controversy, not really controversy, so, some conversation, uh, basically talking about the arbitration filing. So Samsonov, obviously Toronto um, team, $2.4 million to the Leafs. Are saying this is what we believe Samsonov is worth. The player is at four point nine million dollars. Now, here's the thing: when you look at those numbers, the team is always going to shoot low. The players is always going to shoot high. That's that's how it works. Because now you'll have an arbitrator come in and look at both these and think, okay, this is what this deal or this is what this guy is worth, um, and they're going to take a look at the numbers. It usually falls closer to the middle uh most of the time the team has the most realistic number uh which again you you can make the argument that sometimes the team goes in super low uh, and it almost makes no sense but i i'm not even mad at the 2.4 but the 4.9 i think is a little nuts but we we kind of expected that was going to happen uh samsonov's a really good goalie and we're going to look at his numbers and everything again here but i i do believe the loose will probably figure something else out like it won't just be this one year deal it won't be this you know arbitration hearing that's on friday today is wednesday the time of making this video but if we look at this article here that's on editor and leaf they took some information uh from elliot friedman here basically saying um that you know they they probably will get a deal in place uh maybe a longer term ex extension before uh the, the arbitrator has to get involved uh, he believes that the organization wants to keep the deal three years or under, so they don't really want to commit to Samsonov too much uh, past three years, which I can understand. So basically, um, in, in terms of the numbers that he's put up, Samsonov has been pretty damn good. Uh, he, he, came, he got his career high in wins at 27, played a lot of minutes, had a 2.33 goals against average, and a 919 save percentage. Now he was pretty good in the playoffs, but uh, you know Joseph Wall ended up taking over towards the end there, and he actually played really well as well. Uh, so it gives the Leafs an option for their backup there, unless they go out there uh, and they do something else, which we will briefly talk about, and we probably will talk about going forward into uh, the off season still, and going into the regular season, preseason, all the good stuff that are going to happen probably starting uh, in mid September, which is always good. We always want to get some hockey in. But the the thing, the problem that I have with Samsonov is that while I do believe he's a good goalie and that he can be a starter, the Leafs not wanting to commit more than three years is a little bit telling on, first of all, what they think he's worth. And second, the risk that they think they're taking if they give him a longer term deal, the risk that they think that maybe he's not going to be as good in three years or maybe they don't want to you know sign him and he was just a flash in the pan and he ends up burning out you know that's the balance and that's the risk that you take you can sign a really good player for a really good deal for a long time and that contract looks amazing but you also on the flip side could sign a player to what they you think they're worth at that time and then they fall under and they, and they don't play very well because if, if we're just looking at this realistically, Samsonov is a guy that playing in the 27 to 30 game range is probably his sweet spot. But the Leafs need him to play far more than that. The Leafs need him to play like 40 plus games. And if he does that, is that going to hurt him? Um, and is he going to give up more goals? Is he going to give up more chances? And the Leafs blue line, in my opinion, got worse defensively right now. And as crazy as that sounds, but they don't look as good defensively. And that's a problem. So 
The Leafs need to make sure that Samsonov is their guy because they don't want to have to be like, okay, Joseph Wall, a guy who's barely played in the NHL, you look pretty good, but now you're going to play 30 games. Like, that's that's not exactly what the Leafs want. They want Wall to play some games. They want to probably sign a veteran goalie to play some games uh, as a backup. That like they they really need they need Samsonov to play like like I think I said forty, but like they really need him to play like fifty plus games almost. Like there's a lot of games in the regular season. There's eighty two games, and then you know you get the playoffs and everything else like that. So the the Leafs need him to play a significant amount of games. Uh, and and when he's played more, he he hasn't looked as good. But um, I, I think that Samsonov's a really good goalie to take a low risk, you know, three year deal on uh, and especially for not a ton of money, because if we look at the cap situation, the Leafs realistically are probably still around three, two point four to three million dollars over. Um, I move Gambrell to the minors. Uh, I have Nick Robertson here. So as you can see, the Leafs have an extra forward and they also have an extra defenseman. They, they apparently aren't done on the blue line and, you know, they're obviously going to have to shed some money here. Um, but you take Matt Murray out of the conversation. If this arbitration number lands around four, then you're only saving 600 K on this cap, which doesn't get you underneath. So they need to trade Matt Murray. So let's just put him on LTIR. That gives you two, only $2.2 .2 million. Well, what if you turn around and you say, uh, and you trade Sam Lafferty. Now you're looking at 3.4. Well, that might be entirely Samsonov's contract. So do you trade Connor Timmins? And then this ends up being 4.5. That's still, while depleting your team of its depth, like you're barely getting any space here. So something's got to give with this team. Um, I'm wondering if they're looking at Cali Yarncrook right now and thinking, okay, this guy's really good. Um, he played really well with Matthews. Uh, do we have to let go of him though, even though he still has three more years left? Uh, he has a modified no trade clause, but the Leafs need to find ways to wiggle some money around. And, you know, if they trade Nylander, obviously that opens up space, but your goal isn't to just trade Nylander for cap space. You have to make a Nylander trade to get better. Uh, and it's probably going to be in involve the blue line, but, uh, th there's some tough decisions to be made here. The Leafs have to be very careful with what they're doing. Uh, I think Samsonov, coming in at a pretty high number is less than ideal. I hope the Leafs can get him under 3.5. Uh, the most, the very most, the, the ceiling of all ceilings would be 3.6 in my eyes. But I was hoping the Leafs would get him in the 3.2 uh, range. I honestly uh, was a little bit surprised seeing how far apart they were even in arbitration. That's a little bit crazy. Um, but I'm hoping they get them in the 3.2 range. Uh, I think that that's probably fair, especially if it's only a two or three year deal. Um, I, I'm I'm happy to have Samson off. Don't get me wrong. All right. Well, this is less than ideal. The camera decided to die right at the end of the video. But basically what I was getting at is that the Leafs need to be careful um, because they don't know if Samson off is truly that starting goalie that they need. Um, because he's going to have to play a lot. And even this year, you know, he played a lot of games, but they had guys that could come in and play games for them. They're going to have to find more of that organizational depth uh, to be able to play games for them. You don't want to put too much on Wolves' shoulders. Is there a trade coming? Is there a signing involved? That could be Brian Elliott. They were talking about that as well. Um, you guys let me know in the comments down below. Sound off in the comments, like I always say. Thank you guys for watching again. Sorry about the quality drop off at the end of this video. Again, I'm just using the webcam to finish this video off. It looks terrible, um, but the camera died. I've been filming a little bit today, so uh, a little bit of a malfunction there. But if you're new here, like I said, like, subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Join the squad. Thank you guys so much for watching. Go Leafs, go. Leave your comments down below about videos you want me to make. Tons of content coming. Again, thank you for the support. I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Peace.